Okay, well, welcome to North Dakota After Dark. It is nine o'clock, so after dark, and we're in North Dakota. Everyone's in North Dakota today. So one of those good days where you can check all the boxes. In light of that fact, we are going to actually do a little bit, almost like a script today, where we're going to do our live reads on time without having to do it afterwards. So Corey, take it away. North Dakota After Dark is proudly brought to you by Endries Construction Services. With over 20 years of experience in all areas of construction, projects worked on including banks, oral surgery offices, dental offices, schools, real real, <laughs> retail space, auto body shops, you name it, they can build it. They offer assistance with all phases of construction from the initial design phase all the way through completion. You dream it, they make it a reality. Endries Construction Services. Nailed it, Corey, once again. Well, most of it. <laughs> yeah. A um, couple extra shout outs today. Our friend, uh, Ramey, wrote a book called The Chain of Pearls. I suggested she call it Pearl Necklace, but she said it's not that kind of book. <laughs> uh, you beat me to the dirty joke, and I'm ashamed of myself. Um, it's a feel-good story in which a journalist is found dead. So, I mean, that always uh, makes me happy. Um, mystery story set in Martha's Vineyard. Very good. I read one of the early drafts. I suggest uh, check it out. Book two comes out in August. Uh, what other things I can say? Oh, uh, if you are from Minot or Winnipeg, get someone to read it for you. There are no pictures in it, so this might not be for you. But if you're from Grand Forks, you can handle it, no problem. If you order it directly from Ramey, um, she will sign it and underline the fuck scene. So give it a shot. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, Ashley Fiala made this nice shirt. Oh, that's Ooh. awesome. Yeah. Soon to be for she, sale, along with Mom Island shirts. She is creative beyond. Like, She's a, um, a good job. Jet still when when um Jet played with Mason, she made these really cool hockey like Starbucks cup cups. Yeah. Still to this day, Jet's favorite cup. Like, yeah. if we lost it, it would be devastating. So yeah, nice she's job. crafty lady. Yes. Um. Kyle, if, if people yeah. buy Mom Island shirts, do we share any of the proceeds, or does it all go to Kelly's podcast? It all goes to Kelly's pocket. <laughs> it goes to Kelly's gambling fund, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Which everybody wants to support that. Um, you know, I Matt would appreciate it. You know, that's it's it works out for everyone, all right? Yeah, yeah. So, Mom Island shirts will be available in uh, white and black for men, and then uh, teal and white for women and men from Winnipeg. So, do the Minot ones come without sleeves, like right away? Naturally, naturally. Yeah. And denim trim, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. hey, yeah. It's real classic. Yeah, uh, you got to show off that Barb Ryer uh, tat there. So, um, so in addition to uh, the fun banter and announcements, we have a guest, Andy Schneider. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Jane. Really excited to be here. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, first podcast I've ever been a part of. Heck yeah. Our, us too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're just making it up as we go along. So um, uh, I've known Andy here for a little while. Uh, Andy is a uh, hockey player, hockey coach, cool guy, father of, and with apologies to Charlie and Mace, probably my favorite might hockey player. I, so just a A plus kid who also likes the Oilers. So it's um, a lot of it rests on that, but he also is a good kid. So uh, man about town, what other hats do you wear, Andy? Business owner with Business. my brother. Uh, yep, we got Dakota TV in town. Um, like I said, father, son, brother, friend, amateur golfer. Yep. It's a uh, yeah, champion oh. golfer, though, last the hey. amateur side. So That's, can't uh, complain. Can't sneeze at that, right? No, right. And a four time bee sting survivor. So, oh, it's pretty nice. <laughs> Uh, had I known, I would have dressed up. Right. Right. <laughs> Survivor. Survivor, yeah. <laughs> so what, what ribbon do you get for to be a bee sting survivor? Do you, do you get a month? Do you get a flag? Do you get a ribbon? What? How, how does one denote being a bee sting survivor? I got the kids maybe an ice pack. And that was about, uh, that was my badge of honor. Yeah. So. yeah. Wonderful. And we Great. moved on with it. Yep. Great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, this is not 60 Minutes. I'm not Leslie Schaefer. Do you want to start with Bee Sting surviving or hockey? We can start with hockey. The Bee Sting okay. isn't really as bounce. So. 
Well, we we can we can make we can stretch stuff out with pretty sophomoric jokes for a long time. So don't don't undersell us on that point. <laughs> don't underestimate us. Yeah. Uh, so hockey, so, uh, termite coach, Mike coach. Um, one of the things I wanted you to do is, uh, we had a couple young gentlemen on the show a couple weeks back who, um, found the monster tiring quote tiring. Would you wish to offer a rebuttal? Um, or would you want to leave it for Spicer? You know what? I, I will say this about the monster. It is the greatest drill to get. 40 to 50 kids moving on the ice for 10 minutes. Um, skeptical at first, like everybody else, uh, struggled with the setup. But, you know, by about week two, we had it dialed in. The kids really, you know, they started to learn it. Obviously, they're going to complain. It's a, it's a lot of parts. But, uh, you know what? I don't know. It's probably the greatest youth hockey drill at that level I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and Charlie offered a little advice. He said, if you want to make the monster easier, skate as a goalie. You don't have to take a puck. So Classic. word of the wise for you upcoming three and four year olds there. <laughs> yeah. Charlie's playing chess. These guys are just playing checkers. So hundred <laughs> percent. So, um, and, and so you, and you, uh, coached a lot of termite this year as well. How did that go? Uh, you know what? The termite, uh, two roundup went, uh, it was pretty good. We, you know what the kids, you know, and my fourth year of youth hockey now. Yeah, I kind of got my two guys, but even on the termite level, they were better than termite one. You yeah. know, and you got and that's and try to make it fun. And we, uh, I don't think we really had maybe one kid, maybe one or two kids quit. But then that I remembered from termite ones. Yeah, but I think we gained six or seven. Right. So number. From what I know, everyone had a good time. Um, the ice breaker was fun. Good weekend. And uh, it just, it's a good experience. I, we had a great experience, you know, and, and, but you go back down a level from, even from the mites. It's, and a, it's a test yeah. in patience. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I think I was just so new to it when the, when Charlie and Will and Mace were all going through it, that it, it didn't bother me. But then you see like those guys' brains work now. And then... <laughs> You go back and have to. Uh, Reset. It, <laughs> uh, I bless daycare providers and kindergarten and first grade teachers. Heck yeah, they are. They are, uh, they, they, they are for sure shoelings and so. Well said. Um, and. I guess maybe just to get the elephant in the room out of the way, would you like to congratulate your former high school team so Kelly can roll her eyes? You know, <laughs> had a good year. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I, I listen to, yeah, I, I listened to Matt's podcast uh, from, what was that, episode 25? You know, and that was a uh, fresh, fresh wound. You know, like it was right after the state tournament, so emotions are are, are there. But um, as a guy who's kind of watched that senior class with a nephew on the team um, on Red River, after watching all those guys for the last 10 years or so playing and growing up together, the, the best two teams were in the state championship. And for sure. they could play 10 times and it'd go five and five. Yeah. And it, and it, I worry game, you throw the records out, it's pure emotion, pucks are going to bounce. Who's gonna Who's gonna take a penalty that they shouldn't take? You know what I mean. Just trying to get their team going. I mean, it's just there's so many things that could happen, but um, it does speak volumes that we had 40 kids from Grand Forks that grew up in the program. Yeah, get and they're the you know 40 of the best players in the state, yeah. as far as I'm. Um. When we had Matt on, we, we talked about that a little bit, just speaks well to the program. And at the time, I, I felt bad. I didn't mention that the Knight Riders also finished third um, at State, a team that wasn't expected to. So, you know, it, crossing genders there between boys and girls, we had a, a, a lot of kids do very well for themselves uh, at, at the state level. So, again, nice uh, nice testament to what's going on in town here. Yep, fantastic first year for Kelly coaching the the, the girls' team over yep. there. And, you know, he uh, – got he's got a vested interest he's got a couple daughters i believe on the team you know and and i watched uh they 
kind of was kind of fun this year. Their their games were kind of overlap some of our practices over at the Blue Line Club when we were there, and so we'd sneak over there and watch a period or two. And as the year got went on, they got better. And you know, I ran into Kelly a few times, and we'd talk, and he'd be like, "What do you see?" And and I think that he's got them on the right route. You know, they just they're moving the puck better by the end of the year. And to go in there and uh, as a you know a team that was a threat, but still not probably a favorite, you yeah. know, to go out and 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 really put it together at that time of year and and know what's on the line. I'm I'm really proud, you know, to say uh, it's good to see the girls getting numbers and um, seeing that program succeed because. We're too good of a hockey town to not have a, a good girls program in it. Yeah, that's a uh, very, very good point. And I think with, uh, you know, Margo there now, uh, also a uh, former guest on the show, episode eight or so. Uh, yeah, I think just uh, onward and upward for for that program. So nice, nice to see. Absolutely. Um, so Andy, could you, uh, for those of you who don't know, and again, our, our, uh, our listening radius is a very tight circle around, uh, Riverside and South Grand Fork. So I, I think we check all the boxes. However, if we do happen to get an out of town or listening, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, uh, where you played? I know Red River and UND, but there's some other, other stops in there that people would like to hear about. Uh, okay. Born in Grand Forks, came up through the youth hockey program and, uh, in my sophomore year, uh, well, Bantams, we won a st- uh, couple state tournaments, went to a couple national Bantam championships. I used to go to the tournament. I don't know if they still do anymore, but um, Grand Forks won it the, the year before I got to Bantams. And then my two years there, we um, we lost the national championship. My eighth grade year, ninth grade year, we I think we took third. And then uh, so I had a pretty good youth hockey career. And then my sophomore year, I made Red River. And we ended up winning the state championship that year, and uh, part of a pretty good, pretty good run of Red River teams in the late '90s there. And same thing though. I mean, Central was always a competitive game. There was just both both schools were good, and and uh, so it was really you know um, back then too. It was the the open enrollment thing, whatever it is, you know, wasn't so prevalent. So it was more south and north end. So it was. Uh, it was pretty intense because we always played against those kids, you know, yeah. growing up on set. But then um, played a junior year at Red River, and then I was tendered by Lincoln Stars. So the day after the state tournament, I I took off, and uh, what started out is, you know, hey, I'm going to give it a go, see where I fit in in the league. Uh, my junior year, kind of bounced back and forth, and after about the third weekend, I uh, – the right – was on the wall and Steve Johnson, you know, UMC Crookston coach now, uh, was our coach down there and he said, you're, you're ready to make the move. So I, I headed down to Lincoln and enrolled in high school and then my senior year, I had about a minute of, do I come back and play my senior year? And it just kind of saw where I was and talking to schools and NHL teams and I just made the decision that this is where I stay. So ended up in Lincoln, my senior year of high school, one more year out, and and during that time, I signed a scholarship with University of North Dakota, and it was uh, pretty exciting. Had uh, had a couple schools that were it, pretty pretty in the mix, but um, you know that was right when they announced the new Ralph was going to happen, and exciting play at your hometown. And so my freshman year was the first year of the the new Ralph. So, no kidding. Okay. Yep, and I missed the first game. Uh, I was suspended for fighting in the last game. So the old- <laughs> I so was at that back- game. <laughs> yeah, in Blaze grab and calls me an idiot and says, "What the hell are you doing? You're gonna miss the best game ever." But <laughs> is to get Zach Preezy to sign at North Dakota because you're sitting with him at the game. So I was Zach's uh, student host that weekend, and uh, I sat with him in the game. And he was like, "Why aren't, why aren't you playing tonight?" And I said. Oh, I got kicked out for fighting last week. And I said, if you go to Minnesota, I'm going to kick your ass. And... <laughs> <laughs> and... Okay, so, no, he committed that weekend, but I don't think I had much to do with it. But, uh... <laughs> no, I had, a, I had four years here, and then I was drafted by Pittsburgh. And I uh, went out and 
played with their American League team in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania for a year. And that year I actually uh, was playing pretty well and I got hit from behind, broke my arm and my wrist in about uh, seven, eight spots, got plates and stuff put in and the doctor told me I'd never use a pencil again, let alone play hockey. So I came back uh, to Grand Forks. UND was kind enough to honor my scholarship and I got to come back and finish school. And then I kind of got the bug again. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm all in BS on this diagnosis. And I, I really want to play. I'm not done yet. So I started kind of working out again. Talked to, had to sit out. You know, that whole year I sat out. But I strengthened my arm. And, and my agent got me a tryout with Anaheim. And I ended up making Anaheim's roster and signing with their American League team out in Maine, Portland, Maine. So I played a year there. And then signed with Toronto. And then I ended up over in Germany for a couple of years. So I had uh, five years pro hockey in six years. And uh, the body started, you know, I, I, I wish I would have played a more finesse style, but this wasn't, that wasn't the game back. So I was wearing tear. <laughs> <laughs> finally kicked in and uh, had the opportunity to start coaching in the USHL. And uh, so I went down there for a year and coached in Lincoln. And my now at the time, uh, my wife, Heather, still my wife, but at the time she said, <laughs> are you really enjoying this game anymore? Are you, or do you want to kind of maybe start a family and start that part of life? And, and it was time. And I got, you know, my brother kind of said, Hey, I can sure use you back here. And, and we've been back since 2011, 12 ish now. So set up shop, hopped into the family business and a couple kids later and we're uh, we're really enjoying being in Grand Forks. Nice. That's a long you, story. That, that's short. A good, yeah. Well, you had to come back and sell me the, a washing machine, a TV, yeah. and a dishwasher, right? So. Gotcha. And and by dishwasher, I mean an appliance, not not Amanda. Just to to clear that. <laughs> Different conversation. You got lucky for that. For sure. So. Wow. Pretty. Uh, and- Andy, I'm going to tell you right now, I think you're underselling that fight because uh, I was at that game in that fight. I've seen the yeah. post videos of that fight. And if you asked me right now to come be one of your delivery guys, I'd be like, man, I'm in. Just just don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> just, can, I, can I please give my, my lawyer job two-week notice? <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, he said I had to, and I, I, I'm going to. I was like, I can't give you two weeks notice. <laughs> yeah. Andy said I can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's been fun, though. Uh, yeah that's great uh it's when no it just occurred to me when you uh were in anaheim or in germany did you ever run into jason marshall was he in anaheim at the time jason marshall yeah i actually jason marshall is it the same one that played in dallas uh no uh the with the wild in anaheim and then over to germany yeah I, I know the name. Remember, yeah, okay. Danny, um, don't think I've really crossed. I fought Grant Marshall. Yeah, oh, <laughs> in the mayor a couple times. Okay, so. yeah, I was just just curious. He's going to be on the show here in a couple of weeks, I think, as well. So I thought, oh, that'd be a funny, funny. Yeah, scene. no, the name. Remember the name, and you know, and uh, it's it's amazing to see. You know, I watch a just on. I don't really watch a ton of podcasts. Yeah, but some of the. Uh, you know, spit and chicklets. I played with Paul Bissonette, Ryan Whitney, mm-hmm. but that was my first Wilkes-Barre with all those guys. Yeah, they were all there, they're all like rookies together. Yeah. So some of their guests, Colby Armstrong. I mean, I, me and Colby were roommates, and uh, our okay. next door neighbors hung out every day. You know, so I yeah. see a lot. Of, you know, so a lot of these former guys, you you cross paths with, and the, the people they interview too. You're like, oh my god, I. I remember having a beer with that guy in Binghamton or nice. yeah. Right. Jason Marshall is a name I do remember though. Yeah. Okay. It's well, yeah, I just ran into him in Fargo a couple of years ago. We kind of kept in touch after that. And he uh, became an architect. Went to Germany, loved the had didn't take his family, had all the off time like the buildings. Now he's the architect for Frank Gary's firm. So it's just yeah. Unreal. Yeah, just small world type of thing. So yeah. Passion after hockey. That's that's the main thing. You know what I mean? You see too many that have a void to fill, you know, and can't find it. So yeah. 
yeah it, nice uh really a nice dude so we'll be fun to fun to have him on because he's uh lo lots of stories as well oh yeah he's been around yeah yeah i uh i told him once i saw him play in edmonton when he was with the ducks and he was minus five he's like fuck you i remember that game <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't remember the game he scored two goals, but he remembers the minus five. He remembers the the dash five up in Edmonton there, yeah. So it was. Uh, I'm sure that was a fun. Of, I'm sure that was a fun coaches meeting the next morning. So yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, well, Edmonton didn't win a lot in those days, so yeah, I'm sure it was doubly uh, doubly embarrassing. So. <laughs> and so, um, you uh, left high school early, um, went to the USHL. What uh, so? Right after law school, I worked for the league for a number of years. So what uh, – uh, Johnson was the coach. I imagine PK was still around and, and – um, uh, PK uh, was in Waterloo. Rapids. His first years in Waterloo. Okay. Uh, I think Cobra might have been there. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah. But um, Mike Castings was yeah. in Omaha. Um, Bliss Littler. Remember yeah. Bliss, Tri-City. Yeah. Um. Uh, who D Dave? Well, who was who the heck? Scott Bell and Dave Christian might have been the coach one year in Fargo FMI Sharks. Okay. So there was a you know it was a, it was a it was a different league back then though. I've went to a game. I mean the league was very Minnesota, North Dakota, yeah, Michigan. There were some some Chicago guys, Alaska, but. I mean, you watch that league now, it's like watching UND hockey. There's guys from Phoenix, Florida. I mean, the game, like it or not, Bettman's plan worked in right. the late 90s. Yeah. It, it's, it's proofs there, right? I mean, you got Austin Matthews almost at 60 goals this year from Phoenix, right? I mean, you just – the game grew in these areas that, that put hockey on the radar for some of these kids that probably couldn't be a NFL running back or a linebacker, right, or a basketball player, but – all of a sudden, there's a spot for them shooting pucks, and they've right. they've made they've made a pretty dang good career out of it. Just yeah, it taps into a different demographic. I uh, I think I might have told the story once before, but I was in uh, Scottsdale a few years ago, kind of bored on a like a Sunday morning. Went to a 16 new game there, three colleges and about nine WHL teams watching the game too. So in wow, just in hanging out in Scottsdale on a Sunday, a nice nice place to be. But I mean, just that scouting trip. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think a lot of the old boys, all the old WHL guys, I think had relocated, but yeah. Right. Old guys, yeah. Bubs was there and it was, it was, uh, yeah, fun, fun to see. Absolutely. Nope. Right on. Nice to, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, I, I'm not sure if a lot of people realize it, but certainly nice, nice for hockey in, in America, I would say, to have, have those, uh, what do you call it? Non-traditional market served served like that on a out of the way time. Right. Yep. Well, and and it just uh, and the way that some of those leagues do it, it, it makes it so convenient where you have these showcase weekends. And I mean, when I was in Lincoln, they they sent I was kind of the assistant coach, and but I kind of said, hey, let me get a. You know, I wanted to learn about the league and where these players were coming from, so I kind of volunteered, and they'd send me to Detroit for the weekend, Chicago, yeah. Phoenix, Dallas. And you go watch eight teams come in and you get to watch hockey from Thursday to Sunday and you get a lot of hockey, a lot of games. And I always, that was one down in the South in January where, you know, I had to, someone had to do it. it <laughs> could have went, could have went on the, on the road trip up to Green Bay in January. Right, Phoenix, there's a kid. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to take Phoenix. Yeah. Tough one to miss. Um, uh, do you see anything nice about baseball for Corey? Do I want to say anything nice about baseball? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Corey's in shirt. full baseball mode we, now. <laughs> baseball yesterday, actually. So we are we are getting into it. It's that time of year. I, I literally just came from baseball practice. That's why I was two or three minutes late. So, you know. Teaching those twelve-year-olds how to hit off a key. Yeah. <laughs> Back to keep them. Yeah. Well, did you, did you play baseball growing up, Andy? 
a D to D breakout tonight at practice. That was, uh, I almost threw my stick into the stands and left. But <laughs> bless their hearts. But the hamster was on the treadmill. They were just couldn't they couldn't yeah. stay up and figure it out. It was uh, it was close. Uh, Andy, Andy, I feel like you're you with your background and the names you've dropped already, you, you've gotta have probably the most unique take on my favorite question, which is what is the best chirp you've either said or heard in your time involved in hockey? Uh, <laughs> I I actually I can tell you it. Uh, <laughs> I uh, two variations of this, but it was my first year pro, and we're playing down in Hershey. And Wilkes-Barre and Hershey was a pretty. It's a big game, you know. They got the Hershey Park rink, and Hershey's been around for a hundred years. And I think they their rink, let's just say, it holds thirteen thousand. Half. And we're playing them, and I'm a I'm a week or two into this league, and I line up by the bench, and their captain, <laughs> he he kind of says, "Hey, Schneider, hey, who the hell do you think you are?" You know, and I kind of looked over and I was like, six, check it out." You know, <laughs> who are you? And Kevin goes, "Holy shit, look at the tail, look at his teeth." So. <laughs> Uh, and I and I I said, too shit. Good one, good one. Yeah. <laughs> Could afford braces at the time, man. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I he and then I heard another one kind of uh, about a month or two later, wherever we were playing in Norfolk, I think, and and that guy, uh, what did he say? Uh, it was pretty much like. Uh, when that with that guy's teeth, it looks like uh, when he spits, it's like a garden hose coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Are my teeth that bad?" I told, I called my wife. I said, "Are they that bad? Am I that ugly?" And she, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Insecurity activated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how you know your wife's a keeper when when you say, "Are my teeth that bad?" And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, they are." <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna. How do I say this? Yes. Yeah. You're uh, ugly, but I still love you. My wife says that to me all the time. Oh, <laughs> not looks. I gave the, that up. Once. <laughs> <laughs> how were they in Germany, Andy? And does anything in German sounds scary, regardless. You know. You know what? I I actually really enjoyed uh, my time over there. Um, I I. Uh, you know, Germany is a good mix because you get a lot of imports. Yeah. But, it, you know, you had your 10 imports. So you kind of felt like home. But I really enjoyed the German guys. Yeah. Uh, but they, I thought the culture was cool. I, I liked the towns. Um, loved 40 for 50 games instead of 82. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, but the it is it is intense when you're sitting there and people are just yelling at you. In, in a language, and you're just like, oh, what? <laughs> I don't yeah. know what you're saying, dude. <laughs> like, and, Everything uh, in German is yelling. Everything. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's, even when they're being sweet, it's yelling. Yeah. No, so it was, uh, it was just a different experience. And, and, you know, but if you, and Kyle, I don't know if you've ever been over there, but if you guys, I mean, if anybody hasn't and has a chance to go to a, a game, it's a completely different yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. They're, they're, hanging you know holding their scarves over their head and banging drums and yeah uh, pants and it, it's just it's a an experience that you don't get in north america i have not been i took three semesters of german in college because i wanted to sleep with a lab instructor uh, i got a d and she did not so unsuccessful <laughs> Well, I have oh. jokes. I have jokes. <laughs> Go for it, Corey. <laughs> I, pr I promised my wife I wouldn't embarrass her anymore on broadcast. <laughs> I'm going to do better, Jess, I swear. <laughs> this is going to be the day that I don't embarrass you. Just this particular oh. day. <laughs> yeah, you know, fellow friend that, of the podcast. Bro. I know. Fellow friend of the podcast, Jason Elmer, said almost the exact same thing about playing over there. Yeah, he said it was great. It was different. Oh. It's those Red Bull jerseys are amazing. 
<laughs> when Jake played, I played against him in when he was in Wolfsburg, and he was uh-huh. uh, like, over there. I mean, th- that guy hit the puck, and the whole crowd started chanting Almer, Almer. And I actually played with his brother-in-law, his sister Jen's husband Quinn Hancock. It, he's her alone my second year there, and he was a as nice as Jason, super good dude. And then my that year also, Jeff Almer was in Frankfurt, and I, I liked I knew Jeff, but man was he a dick on the ice! Like he was, just, <laughs> he, he was not like Jason, and he was sitting there, and I thought we were friends, and he comes up and just hacks me, and and then you <laughs> reach the eight, and then he scored. I think that year he had about seventy five points, and maybe like. One of the MVPs of the league, or you know, all league. Uh, he just so he riled guys up and get on the power play, and, and there's so much space, and he'd just do his thing. Uh, bless his heart. He got <laughs> well, don't don't let Jace tell you any differently, but I'm officially a half an inch taller than him. So if he ever asks you, Corey is a half an inch taller than him. <laughs> oh, I'm teeny. <laughs> Oh man, the uh... well, something I I've always found interesting with Andy. So Andy's son and my son Mace do spring hockey together, and so my um my husband Matt really wanted Will to be on the team, and he was like, you know, Andy, he's like this hockey guy, and you know, you hear Andy's background and everything like that. But the surprising thing was when Matt first reached out to Andy, Andy was like, no, I don't know if we're going to do this. And Matt was like totally blown away because he's like, no, there, he has to do this. I want Andy. Pr-. And he was like, and I'm not taking no for an answer. And I want him on the bench. He's like, because he's really going to be great for these kids. So I always kind of wanted to ask Andy, um, because just so you know, Andy, that probably made Matt love you more because the first year of Junior Super Jet, when Matt was reached out, he was like, no, we don't do spring hockey. We're not doing it. We're not into it. So I always kind of wanted to ask you with, you know, all the hockey that you have in your life and your background, what was kind of, what motivated that? Like what, what, what was your thing? My thought on it last year, you know, when, when Matt did reach out was um, <laughs> hockey. And I, I'm, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, but in our town, it's a it's a saturated thing, right? I mean, it's it it in a good way. It consumes a lot of time, effort, and I know people and have played with people that when they were kids, my dad played, you know, essentially played at Central football, basketball, track, right? Never been on ice in his life. Played college football at UND, captain of North Dakota football team. And he, you know, he just made my brother and I, when there was a time for hockey and a time to not play hockey, right? And he just always told me when we were little, if you're, if you really want to do it, okay. But I don't want you to hate it when you're 18 years old, because that's all you've done since you were eight years old, you know, or seven years old, or pick an age, right? So it's just... And you see guys that were awesome when we were, you know, all the way to high school or juniors even. And you could see at junior or even college, they were just like, I'm over it. I, I'm, you know, at some point, it's a kid's game and we all try to play it as long as we can. But at some point, you're either your body, opportunities, or just your yourself don't want to do it anymore. And, and at the youth level – Whoever's Wayne Gretzky at squirts is probably not going to be Wayne Gretzky by the time they're in Bantams. You know what I mean? And and most of the kids that are really good now are the best athletes. Well, as puberty and bodies grow for these kids, right? I mean, they're, it's going to go like this, right? And I just don't want – I just wanted Will to maybe have an opportunity to play golf, play tennis, play baseball, soccer. and But he really wanted to do it. And and it's been good, but I mean, after spring season, we we put the bag away until September, pretty much end of August, and he did everything else under the sun, and and, and it is fun. I mean, I just uh, 
I, I just was uber cautious, right? And then I love working. Like, that's my, my favorite thing is to work with the kids. I mean, because it's a fun group um, at this age, at 8, 9, 10, 11. They listen to every word you say, too, right? I mean, and they, they think, you know, they're they're a sponge, and, and they might not understand it, but they're they're at least listening and and to see where they'll be now to three years down the line if you start it at a at a certain age of just some simple drills but you know the the kind of the backbone of what hockey smart plays and then you know it just it's fun to see the development so right no and i love to ask because i just i think that's a really healthy attitude <laughs> and it's yeah. you don't see it a lot um, but also because, you know, it, this is coming from someone who gave a lot of their life to hockey. Um, so I don't, I just, I, I like to, to bring in that as well, just because I, I'm with you. It's, it's hard sometimes because we're the same way where, like I said, Matt initially wanted no spring hockey and then he came to that. And, but we also, when spring hockey's done, hockey bags go away and we don't, you know, it's, it's lake time, it's golf time. It's, it's all things that, but we just need a break from hockey so that when you go yep. back in the fall, you're excited to get back out on the ice. But so yep. I just, I think it's a good thing because there's, especially in this community, there's that feeling of like, you got to run to beat the devil on this, you know, like if my kid's not in every developmental camp, you know, they're falling behind and then I'll even start questioning myself where everybody would be like, well, is Jet doing this camp? And I'm like, no, but maybe he should be or, you know, like, so it's everybody starts off with like the healthiest of intentions, but it's hard. So I just I, I think it's a good perspective, especially from somebody who knows a lot about hockey. Um, so I, I think it's a good thing. But I, we're also very glad to have you. and. I, I think that it, Matt says that you are very, very good with the kids. So we're, um, we're not going to allow you to be healthy. You're going to join the cult. Okay. So. <laughs> no, and, and it, and it's that, it would, I would say the same thing though. You know, if Corey asked me if my kid was into baseball or track or pick a sport or, <laughs> or, or, you know, trumpet, it's like, you got to take, <laughs> every now and again right just big group do something different you know just and 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 that and that's one guy's opinion right it's right. not everyone's journey right and right. uh and it, but i think it's okay to talk about that opinion because i think that there are people who maybe feel that way but then feel like oh well i guess i'm the only one who feels like that because of what you know you see like i said i mean hockey goes 12 months a year in Grand Forks, you know, I mean, there, if you want your kids skating that, that often, you have the opportunity for them to do so. So right. I think it's okay to actually even talk about that so that if there are parents who do feel like, man, yeah, maybe I should let them take the summer <clears> and, <throat> and not feel like they're, they're falling behind. Yeah. I mean, it's okay to hear that side too. Yep. And I think if you talk to any trainer, strength coach, whoever, your body can morph into a hockey player body at a young age and yeah. not, and it will have multiple problems at, at, at a certain age, whether they're eight, 17, 18, we have notoriously tight hamstrings, bad hips. You know what I mean? It just hernia problems. Like it's just, these are all things that if you're not athletic, you know, and you just concentrate on one thing. If you do biceps every day, you're going to have the biggest biceps in the league, right? I mean, you got to other things. There are so. orthopedic surgeons yeah. in the Twin Cities getting rich just on yeah. <laughs> from these goofed up, up well, here, right? Like he's just, you know, 14, Matt's, 15. Matt's brother has already had hip replacement surgery from being a goalie from that many years. He's not that old, you know? I mean, I think he had it before he was 40, his first hip replacement. Yeah. Not very typical, but when you're a goalie, you just destroy your hips. Yeah, correct. So um, well, I mean, and, and that was that's like a that's a you know that's a long answer to my question. It was just more. I didn't know if we were ready, and at, at a certain age, some of these kids emotionally aren't ready. Right. 
you know, and that was my a big fear. Like uh, losing is tough sometimes, and they don't know how to lose. You know what I mean? Where it's the world ended, yeah. and it's fierce and it's crying, and and that's that's tough. You know what I mean? Like to try to explain that to a seven, eight, nine year old. You know, that's hey, dude, the Oilers aren't here watching. <laughs> You're right. good. I know. I still have to tell Jet. Jet, I'll say to him after a game when he's distraught, and I'll say, you know, though, like, did the world end, or did it just keep going even though we lost that hockey game? You know, like, I just have to bring that perspective because in his little twelve-year-old mind, you know, the Stanley Cup was lost. So <laughs> I'm like, it wasn't. So <laughs> good news is, sun rises again. You well, got it. I mean, Two things that are impactful. One, what you said, Andy, is uh, I've done biceps every day of my life, and I still <laughs> have not developed biceps. But two, and more importantly, circling back to what you said earlier on, you know, you mentioned that you've met some players who didn't fill that after hockey void, and it's maybe been impactful in their own lives. So maybe not the approach you have to your own child of there's more out there. If this is what you love, enjoy it, but let's, let's do some other things. Let's enjoy some other stuff that's out there. That's, that's a good aspect to hear from players with your background, as far as you've got. And you, quite frankly, I've heard that repeatedly from guys. Um, I, I'm not a hockey player, but guys who reached that level in sports have said, one, there's other things out there. And two, you have to, you have to know what's next. You have to have, and so that's trying to just be a well-rounded individual. You got to have a passion mm -hmm. or hobbies, and and what else do you like? And and then you know when these guys get to a certain level, pro hockey, Jason Marshall has free time, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you start to find, you know, hey, how do I fill the void from? I leave the rink at noon on a practice day till nine a.m. the next day. You. <laughs> Some guys find bad hobbies, bad habits, or, you know, some guys were, you know, like they do an online school and trying to figure out, I, I guess it was just, it was best, uh, it was the best way it was always said. And, and it was, um, you know, remember the movie Moneyball? Oh, yeah. I've seen it a few times. You know, it's a kid's game when he's, when they're scouting him, you know, and it's a kid's game yeah. and we're all going to be told no sometimes. So you got to start, you know, they being started realizing what can I do after my career is done, right? And we're all going to be told no, though, sometime you can't play. And for some guys, it's 18, and some it's 40. So You had me at Moneyball, Andy. You just pulled me right in. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yeah. You want to do karate in the garage? <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, uh, and the answer to that question is what do guys do after practice? If you're Matt Moreland of the Fayetteville Fire Amps circa 2006-ish, rock band is what you do from the hours of noon till the wee hours of the morning. Man yeah. was a lot of rock band played by those Fayetteville Fire Amps. Um, he, he had uh, he had Nickelback here. He had Nickelback here. <laughs> he could pull that off. Right. He plays a mean drums um, to uh, Bon Jovi's Wanted Dead or Alive. Not real drums, but synthetic rock band drums. You will you will not meet anyone more talented. So you should know that about Matt if you don't know that about him. That, yeah. That perception? Yeah. Did I? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> If you if haven't had can... the opportunity to check out Matt Moreland's Elite Prospect page, you probably should do that. <laughs> Dreamy. Dreamy. Uh, maybe we – is it time for a house band, and should that house band be Matt on Rock Band? We just need to get on eBay, get a hold of a full Rock Band set, because I do believe it's not sold in stores anymore, and – Yes, you the you can get the band back together. Yeah, you got a drummer because that was yeah. his role. Okay, so well, yes, is off actually has a full set still. So I all I have to do is make a phone call. <laughs> make that phone call. All right, I.
Yeah. <laughs> I can only play on beginner. But I bring, uh, I, I mean, that's all I can bring to the table, but Matt can actually, he's actually good at a little rusty. Cause like I said, this is, uh, this is pre kid days when yeah. you could do things like play rock band from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. But I think he could, I think he could still, you know, there's gotta be some sort of muscle memory for that. So yeah. I would yeah. agree. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and tying this all back again, like watching the state championship again, not a hockey guy, but, you know, the watching both teams play. I, I don't think one – I don't want, I don't really want to say one team outplayed the other, but is it safe to say that Matt Moreland got outcoached? Ooh. ooh. <laughs> well, Whoa. it would appear so, you know. I mean, that's – that's yeah. I'm going to pay for that joke. I'm going to really pay for that joke. <laughs> He he didn't text that dear Corey. <laughs> I heard you know, what you freaking said. <laughs> that Red River team this year was fun to watch and frustrating to watch. Their mm -hmm. MO every game was to be down two. And they'd either <laughs> or <laughs> or not. You know what I mean? And put themselves yeah. they just and, and uh I remember we were watching it because uh, that was our icebreaker weekend. And um, so we didn't go down to Fargo. We were, we just stayed in town because of the, the early games and kids were tired. And, but I remember watching that that Saturday night going, man, they better, you know, Red River might have to make some adjustments. And I didn't <laughs> think, I, I kind of thought Central was going to close the door on them. I mean, just the way Washburn had played this year. And, you know, it was just, I thought he might, you know, and he played really well. And the, and the way the game went at the EDC championship, I was kind of like, it's, you know, Red River, they, they you know, if they can't get ahead, Central's just going to zone up and keep them to the outside. And their goalie was good. And then just, you know, but that's that's high school sports, right? I mean, it all it takes I is one ball. All of a sudden, a droopy head, you know, and, and, Red River gets another one, and all Mr. Momentum just changed, and, and it just was, you know, but like I said, they could have played 10 times, and I think it would go five and five. I so. agree. What, and you're so right with the momentum, because even in, like, high school games, you can feel that. Like, when that momentum shifts, um, it's hard to turn that tide back around. It really is. Like, And, and I think it's in particular in those tournament games, because they're – they're intense and um, you're getting more crowd reaction and, you know, like it, it really does. You feel the momentum. And when one team sweeps away with it, it's, it can be hard to turn it back. So hard to but, get back. yeah, two break. even teams and, and get out of there. And, and but uh, you know, and, and that rink is the perfect junior hockey, high school hockey rink. Too. It is. I mean, intimate, crowds on top of you you know a lot of people were there and it's it's um you know and the kids know what's on the line right so it's uh it's just a lot of things a lot of emotions going through 16 to 18 year old boys you know and you just it's, it's fun hockey to watch because there could be a change any shift you know yeah. something something could always happen in a high school hockey game where what are the things? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Um, speaking of uh, high school hockey tournaments, was at the um, the Minnesota State tournament, and one of the hot topics, other than you know some of the upsets and whatnot, were the uh, the full ice sellies into the student section. Seems uh, I understand it's fun, <laughs> fun to be there. Just wanted to get your uh, everyone's thoughts on that. Um, okay. I can start. I mean, hey. You make you make to the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament have at her, right? I mean, it's a really hard tournament to just even get to. I mean, especially in that double A yeah. division. When you're coming out of the metro area, I mean, there's four teams in each division down there, each section that probably could make that tournament, right? Yeah. So have at her. It's fun. It's fun for the game you know the the hockey hair thing is kind of cute and you know they, they make it's it's a tradition now but uh man if i was coaching against 
the team that and the kid did the which is now I've seen it about three highlights the selfie stick silly yeah, yeah. It, the, oh they did it all the other night uh, I saw that did, one yeah. uh, you know what I mean so that kind of went you know but like man the next shift against that kid would have been <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care how you know, you know, <laughs> in the not from behind but <laughs> yeah. It would be a chop across the wrists or, you know, just something to set the and the message of that's Bush League. But yeah. I get it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Listen, watch, yeah, and I think to a certain extent, the North Dakota high school game, too, like every big hit's got to be a penalty, too. So there's no no real path to retribution sometimes, too, right? I, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 um, it's, I, you can't, you can't take a run at a guy anymore. And, and you just got to find other ways to get under their skin and, uh, and hate to say payback. Cause that's not what it's about. You know what I mean? It's more just a, a rub, rub them out or put it on the scoreboard. Right. And put yeah. it right back. You got to do something to kind of light a fire. Right. As a, as a quick follow-up, what would be your favorite clandestine, way to get back at a guy you know what i i was a kind of a jerk back in juniors it was I, well, pros i kind of stopped doing it a little bit just because um there was some muscle on the other teams that i didn't want <laughs> <laughs> but there was guys that paid job but uh my favorite one was uh just like if it was in a face off in our zone and I'd be like over by the wall, you know, going under that to that hash mark and yeah. the winger there and just skating up to him and whack right on top of the toes, right on the lace. Oh, yeah. And they'd look, you know, and I'd be like, What what are you gonna do? You know? <laughs> you know? And uh, I and I I didn't wasn't worried in years college, obviously the fighting thing wasn't probably gonna happen, but then uh yeah, I remember uh, some of my first shifts, uh, my first month. You might remember the name David Kochi. Oh, yeah. A, that was my D partner my first oh, month. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so you know what lines we were out there against. Yeah. And, yeah. and I remember staring at some of these guys going, Jesus Christ, you're 6'5". Two hundred <laughs> trained to do. like, And I just prayed that he didn't do something dumb after him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I having to take on a couple kids out of my, you know, I was a bigger guy, but I had, they were out of my weight class and, you know, they, <laughs> oh my God, punching up at six, seven guys is, mm. oh, yeah. as they're just feeding me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Inside inside the arm. So they <laughs> they're just they're trying to bury my face in their chest. and <laughs> Just go down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's character builder right so, right, right. Yeah. yeah it's uh it's you know it's funny the uh you, you get a lot of um you know if you read the hockey news or look on twitter everybody's trying to get hockey or uh, fighting out of the game and then i was at a und game two or three weeks ago and these are like you know our our younger boys age seven eight nine year olds and the second there's even a whiff of a fight these kids are jumping out of their seats fight 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 you know like we're sitting beside um another guest of the show um jess gowan's boy too and he's going bananas thinking there's going to be a fight you know just a sweet little kid but he's yeah. he's ready for for the tilt so it's uh tough, tough you know what? To human nature yeah fighting fighting is uh it's will always bring fans out of their seats right i mean like it or hate it you know uh, it's <laughs> I could go down a another topic, you know, my old roommate, actually my first year roommate, Dan Carcillo, you probably remember his yeah, name. Yeah. I lived with him and he's going through, you know, he's pretty advocate of treatment now. Yes, of, yeah. But I mean, uh, you know, that kid, uh, you know, all those guys, they didn't want to do it. Right. But, but they, but they also wanted to do it. Right. You know, like there was a rush to it that they loved. But then they just were, you know, they'd stay awake at night the night before. Holy crap, I got 
you know, Dennis Bondy coming to town or this guy coming to town. Fight this guy, you know. That's a deep track there. Right? Deep track. Dennis Bondi, yeah. 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 So, you know, like, so these guys, you know, but then they'd do it and they'd be like, that was the biggest rush of my life, you know. But now we, you mm-hmm. know, 20, 15 years later, you kind of see some of the, you know, the demons that those guys had to, you know, Tough, working right? on. Uh, rim. Um, when I was a kid, speak, speaking of fights, very, very briefly, uh, I grew up in Canada, and so the uh, the newspaper would print the roster transactions, like who's called up, who's sent down. And I remember just I seen the day when Dennis Bonvi got called up to the Oilers, and I was like, "Oh yeah, it's oh on. yeah." Well, There's a lot of YouTube videos of him and, and the Oilers, and yeah, not not doing much other than he, fighting, but yeah, he actually played oh, in those tra- and oh yeah, first no kidding. Uh, he was an actually actually one of the best guys that probably could have been on our team, and just like a welcome to the pro hockey lifestyle. Yeah, yeah it, nice. I mean, he had wife and kids, and he kind of was a father figure. You know, he'd be sure. like, "You're coming over. Wife's making dinner tonight. You know, kids yeah. are." Excited. It was just you know a way to keep a twenty four, you know, twenty three, four, five year old guys from doing, you know, going to the dinner at the local bar you know like that we did about this week you know what i mean it was just uh go eat a home-cooked meal instead of eating out and and then he just uh he was kind of he was he was a he was a kind of a mentor our first year and i still bounce some stuff off from time to time we text every now and again oh good deal oh no kidding okay well humble break right yeah well tell (laughs) me kept uh, young kyle entertained reading the newspaper so (laughs) Uh, well, Kyle, the, part of the problem with these seven, eight, nine-year-old kids is that they have never been five, nine and a half, and uh, lined squared up against a guy six foot four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fighting isn't so exciting then. <laughs> yeah, I say or- often about my kids that one of their biggest problems is no one kicks their ass often enough. Honest to God, yeah. I think that it would be just kind of beneficial for them, just a little perspective because man, do they think they're tough, and I just. I'm 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 an adult. There's a little bit of a you know a, a, an outmatching strength, but damn it, you know if someone could just kick their ass for me, that's their own age. It would just it might make them easier to live with, you know. Good nice, good nice boys, Kelly. Yeah, well, I yep. mean, not in the morning. They're not. <laughs> what what you need is is a uh, a kid, uh, your child who hits puberty early, then he gets to bantams. And he stays five eight, and everyone else gets to be six foot. And I'm like, maybe you don't want to hit people as much anymore. Right? <laughs> you're, you're not very big anymore, big guy. Perhaps have a different maybe different <laughs> Like <laughs> maybe you have different strengths. Yeah, you may need to learn to carry the puck more often. <laughs> you can become more well rounded. Yeah, yeah. Not talking about anyone in particular. I swear. <laughs> Just me. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. One of the other things I, I learned recently is uh anybody watched it was was it last weekend when the wild played Nashville and they pulled uh Yep. Did well, anyone know that rule before that game came up? Didn't know the rule, just never thought I'd you know what I mean? Like yeah, uh, and this is this is dating myself a little bit. I saw Roger Nielsen do it with the Canucks a couple times, like in the in the mid '80s. Just when he, okay. would, he would just pull out, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the goalie at the end of the second. Weird stuff like that. But yeah, it used to be was it five on five back then though in overtime? Yes. Yeah, three on three is an aggressive aggressive pull, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's just so much ice. I could see a five on five overtime, but. Yeah, Ugh. you know, yeah. no, no idea that uh, that was on the book. So it's one of the had to be one of the more obscure rules. Obscure, yep. No, saw it on the when I was watching that. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. And, and if 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 uh, if you didn't see if if you if you pull that maneuver and get scored, you you lose the you lose the NHL loser point, uh, which is. I guess you have to put uh, an ass in there. Minnesota's kryptonite in life is not ever being bad enough. Just yeah. be bad. <laughs> Just a little bit bad, right? 
We're going to draft in the shooting spots. <laughs> in every single Minnesota sports team. Mediocrity yep. is their name. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Just be bad. That's, that's one of my favorites. I, I I literally was in Florida watching the Twins in spring training, and the Twins in their home field were playing against the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays were split squatted, meaning they had their B teamers there, and the Twins starters lost to this to the Triple A Double A Blue Jays five to two, and it was horrible. And what made it worse is Almer was there. A huge Blue Jays fan, and every time they'd score, he'd just look up at me and be like, "Are you enjoying the game?" No, no, I'm not enjoying the game. <laughs> no. I uh, I wore my Expos hat all around Florida, and every friggin' Quebecois wanted to come over and talk to me. I'm like, none. And two, I don't want to talk to you anyways. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Um, I'm from the imaginary. East Ontario and yeah. East. Yep. Cut them off. No, right? thank you. No, yeah. no, none. None. Yeah. Uh, I think that might have been one of the first jokes I told to Kelly, which was bonjour, dude. And then she laughed. I'm like, let's be friends. <laughs> Again, did we just become best friends? Yeah. <laughs> so I do have something to thank French for, but not not much. <laughs> not a lot. Yeah. Hey Kyle, uh, yes. who's the, since we've had two Rough Riders in a row, who's the next Rough Rider we're going to have on? Just curious. <laughs> Suggestions, Andy? <laughs> yeah. Ask um, the Rough Rider Torch. Scarp? Scarp, Scarp. lives right behind me. Yep. Um, you know, there's a couple out there that, uh, that probably could bring some substance to the podcast. You know, um, yeah, they've had a long run central guest on here, and I don't care for it at all. No, <laughs> gotta get some rock oh. you know, just to mix it up. Um, <laughs> if you were trying to maybe as the summer approaches, uh, he might be able to add some fishing knowledge. Mark Bry, Mr. Wow. Hockey, talk, talk hockey, got a youth, yeah, you know, and uh, get you the fishing report from Devil's Lake. That would, that would be good. Uh, Deuce, another, uh, <laughs> Mr. Hockey, UND, Red River covers a lot of ground. You know what I mean? Yep. Deuce would be good. Um, you know, uh, maybe even Coach Todd Schaefer, UND Golf. Yep. Yeah. Former Rough Rider as well. Yep. Uh, In Manigans. And you know what? Andy's a real conflict for me because this is a Red River guy and he's so goddamn likable. And I just don't want, I'm, I'm having none of that because it's, uh, it, like I said, you know, it, this, this is a rival. Okay. It, it's, it's not, it's not for the faint of heart. And you have to be committed to the rivalry. So it, um, we, we, we've hit our limit of Red River guests. <laughs> You'll notice she never calls me likable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, likeable and basic because Jess is lovely, obviously, you know? Yeah, well, she is. There's a reason they lovely. call her my better ass. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, I had a request to do a live show, and I thought maybe John Holt would host it at the Frog, so it would be a Red River establishment. John and I played Red River football together. Yeah, he, uh, he's he been on the show as well and likes to send photos of him in his Red River gear, so. Yeah, he bleeds red. Yeah. He gets well, it. Get Manasa on. He's a Red River guest plus football. I'm just tying it all together. That's fine. Right? We'll see you guys there, and I'm bringing all the Beanas. Every single one of them. <laughs> okay. That's fine. I, I only like all three of the four Beanas. <laughs> I will. I'll find every single one of them, and I will bring them, okay? Oh. And then you guys will. And I'll, you know what? And I'm bringing the Mardos, too. I'm going to bring oh. them as well. So, <laughs> and some Perpers. Yeah. It's gonna get weird. All right. He was my coach, and he so he bleeds red now. That's so. true. I know. To see that always pissed my dad off for years. He was like, "Freaking Gary, can you believe that?" Uh, he jumped. Yeah. I think, I think I have a whole row of Red River people behind me because uh, Todd Benson said he'd come on as well, and then because I'd like to ask him, um, you know, um, BJ Hanksleben, Andy. I do. 
Yep. Yeah. So he uh, coached with might or might do this year. A hundred percent. Yeah. So he said Todd was his like bantam coach in East Side, and was bringing him home from a game like in Roseau, and was like they got mad at the kids halfway there, just stopped the bus and made him run run out in the field as far as they could go, and then run back in. So I want to ask. If, that's true or not you know or what's the situation yeah yeah right just burn some energy off boys i guess so. <laughs> yeah he said uh in those days they would just give him a school bus and the coach would drive the school bus i'm like this sounds there's gotta be a couple stories there so sure. yeah no, that, so yeah when the, that seems like a lot of red river guests to me yeah, we were we're raised tough on that south end that's yeah. what i hear yeah pretty, pretty thing down here <laughs> Um, oh yeah, the mean street to the south end. I bet it was pretty rough over there. <laughs> all, all five, nine and a half of us, Kelly. On that note, I'm bringing the Lammers too. Now you guys really did it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now you're in trouble, okay? <laughs> yeah, you, tell of... Bina, you tell Bina and Marta what end of the city they live on now. <laughs> we don't talk about that, Corey, okay? <laughs> all right. That's that's their that's their secret shame. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, this almost sounds like a rumble. Should we invite some Manville people just to referee, or is this going to oh, be? Oh, a... yeah, because they're they're central people. All right, so you oh. you say the word, I'll have the whole Stadstead family here. Okay, it's uh, get them in here, get the Manville kids in here. Okay. You leave the walking bruises out of this, man. We love the Manville kids. They're always yeah, they they always bring. A little little something to central and i love it i always get excited when there's a manville kid on the team because uh they they they're awesome people manville is a good town so manville. Uh, rebuttal well, Andy, if you could choose for example if you could choose red rivers manville what town any town you want in north dakota what would it be red rivers manville yeah if you wanted a, a, a counterpart yeah we'll just take thompson Ooh. Does Red River get many Thompson kids? Because I mean, there's no, there's no hockey team in Thompson. There's, but uh, shockingly, I never played hockey with any kid from Thompson, and now it's good to see, you know, just at, at the might level. I'm sure there's more. Yeah. But yeah. oh, we got uh, Max and Tweeten. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Grady. I was gonna there say Violet boys, great hockey players. players. Yeah, a good little player. Sager. Oh, I love got, it. Yeah, we had three kids from Thompson, and they're finally, you know, uh, fantastic ath athletes from that town, whether it's in baseball, football, basketball, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a – but for some reason, I always thought that was so weird. None of those kids ever played hockey when we were yeah. growing up. I'm glad to see it gets more uh, – like, uh, that's getting more popular there because you're right. Like, what I, I was trying to think back to even, like, when I was in high school, and I just don't think there were many kids from Thompson. So it's – it's a good change. It's wonderful to see. But like you said, I remember that baseball was always really good there. That oh, was yeah. that was always big. But I'm loving to see the the Thompson kids coming with out for hockey. It's wonderful. Yep. Yep. Just grow on the game. Grand Forks. <laughs> Did you Jerry yeah. Kevin intended, right? Get Thompson kids playing hockey. Oh, grow the 10 Ooh. miles north and south of us. So. Right. Right. Well, and the Mandel kids are so lucky because they have the Jason Stanson arena, you know, so they, they have that as well, which is really, really awesome. And like I said, I mean, Mandel, their hockey program, um, they, every, every year that there's a central, uh, a Mandel kid on central, they're always someone that you notice because they skate a lot. So yep. it's, you know, you love it. Absolutely. We'll um, accept Thompson kids on our hockey team, but if we're talking about football or baseball, Thompson can suck it. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> right. again, that's rivalries, Corey, yeah. all right? And you yeah. have to – Yeah, sorry. everything in your reasonable mind doesn't want to agree with it, but yeah. damn it, that's, that's why they're fun. Yeah. I've heard they're fair, fair, as we say. And in, in when they're nine, Thompson's recruiting baseball players. Come <laughs> Tom, to Thompson. <laughs> on your job. Down. Kyle's a former Thompson True. resident. Yeah. 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 So I can go to call it. No shade. In Dye no War Road. Call it. Dye War Road. It's like two <laughs> shade, two calories short of East Grand Forks. Not quite enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Not quite Interesting there. formula. Mm. Oh, I love it. Um, what are the questions you guys have for Andy? Why do we stay up so late tonight? That's <laughs> Pat, yeah, it's about an hour and a half past my bedtime, but somebody had baseball practice. That's the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, how, who's going to teach 12 year olds to lean into an O2 pitch so they get hit so they can get a an easy base instead of striking uh, out if I'm not coaching that, that's I know a, just the guy that is a skill <laughs> taught in Thompson I coach my new baseball and listen to the coach yell at the kids about just lean over the plate and get hit <laughs> just let it hit you I looked at Joe meet him I'm like is this is this happening right now he's like <laughs> I love that. Oh, you need to move, Corey. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch, Kyle. It's like a knife. <laughs> just, just keep twisting. Just twist it. <laughs> I think you look good in green. That's why I said it, you know? Jesus, I thought my wife didn't like me, and now you're just as bad. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just uh, equal opportunity. Just trying to make everybody feel included. <laughs> um, well, Andy, really can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Really appreciate all the stories. Uh, obviously you come back on anytime you can, you can be the official Red River guest concierge if you like. Love it. Yeah. Come to yeah. Uh, Toasted Frog is like, I, I should just announce it now. So now, now John's more or less locked in when we, when we finally do a live show, he'll have to set up a phone as well. We can take calls. Absolutely. Yeah. Which will turn into a shit show, but that's sort of what, <laughs> it, so. what we want. That's what we're going for. As Corey likes to say, we're the 154th most popular show on Apple podcasts. Hey, the <laughs> Nowhere to go but up. Yeah. Uh, Corey, for a, for a final shot, can you ask? I think you know the question I, I need Andy to answer. Kelly knows the right answer. I know the right answer. You do not. Let's hear what Andy has to say. You may have to help me with this one because it's like it's 10 o'clock at night. Question. Oh, okay. How pronouncing a certain say, province. If it's a province in Canada that starts with an S, how do you pronounce it? Gapper. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> I think that's how they say it, don't they? <laughs> One more time, Andy. The Saskatoon. Yeah. The Saskatoon. There's a lot of syllables, which Corey likes, but yeah, we're it's Bingo. That, and that's how you know he lives in the Rough Rider district. That's right. Actually, maybe I, uh, I with uh, I know a couple of former Saskatchewan Rough Riders, so we could we could mix it up a little bit, you know. Oh, good guys. But yeah, a plus oh, a couple of fullbacks. So we'll try those dudes out. I want All you right. to know that when we go to Winnipeg this year, I'm going to literally set out a table that just says <laughs> "Pronounce Saskatchewan." <laughs> And I'm just going to sit there with my little coffee cup. It says, pronounce Saskatchewan. Jokes yeah. on you. They're from Manitoba. They can't read anyway. So. You can read <laughs> this card for me. <laughs> does it rhyme with fun? Yeah. It you know does. Uh, all right. Let's send Andy to bed. Andy, thanks again. Uh, really appreciate it. Well, uh, well I, I got to work my way through all the Might 2 funny guys now. So, well, all right. A lot of... Uh, <laughs> deep pool there so we'll get some uh, more on. appreciate the time and uh we enjoyed that a lot thank you so much thank you guys thanks thanks, thanks. andy all right. Good night, guys. all right